Hello and welcome to another player profile and projection here on Talking Yanks, bringing you an episode today, every day until opening day. And today we're talking about Glaber Torres for what? Maybe his last ever PPP downer. Mm. Had a good season last year with the stick. Mm. Enjoyed the new rules, new role. Reinvented himself. I believe he's using a new stick this year, something I heard. Jake, how are you? James, Dave, I'm doing well. Yeah, Glaber Torres, the uh, the prince who was promised future shortstop. That didn't happen so much, but when he's been playing second base for the Yankees, he's been he been hitting enough, um, especially for that position. Uh you know, he was having an okay year. He was having a good year compared to the rest of the roster. And then he really went nuts in the second half. Second half, 68 games, 302 batting average, 374 on base, and 878 OPS. 878. Um, that that he really had a strong final stretch, uh, including a massive August. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see this year. I mean, you can pencil him into the two-hole. Uh you know, I I don't think we're gonna hear about a Glaber extension before the season. No rumors of that. They kind of just came out and said, "No." Yeah, I mean, Gla- haven't Glaber? Um, Glaber will find his way into free agency, and if he does what he did last year, he's gonna be rewarded with a nice contract. Um, no more shortstop in the picture for Glay. I think he started one game there last year. 15 Early games. on, right? Uh, that. Second baseman, Glaber Torres, uh, we will we will see. I think the fun conversations are going to be, where is he in the lineup? Um, no shortstop last year. The year before, got one. So he was clean last year. Mm-hmm. It's in his rear view. Like that. Got in, got over there six times in 2022. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't think more than like one of those was a start. But. Beauty. Uh, so go hit and yeah, I don't. Is he gonna get some leadoff action? Is he gonna be like a six seven guy? Uh, he'll dictate that with his play a little bit. Yep, he was seventh for all second basemen in OPS last year. Not bad, three forty seven on base. That puts him six out of all the second basemen. So when you stack him up that way, pretty good. Now he's going to give you his Glaber moments. I think those rain too heavy of late for me because I actually, like last year, I thought he proved pretty valuable. And if he could do what he did offensively last year with actual players around him, right? then it would be incredibly valuable. Even in the first half, DJ wasn't doing anything at all. Like he, is it his first half? Splits, do they show difference in, I'm pulling up, power, not power? I mean, there's more pop in the second half, but everything's kind of up. Yeah. Everything's up. More, Yeah, but, yeah. Uh-huh. More homers in the first half, but more doubles in the second half. Interesting. One yeah. triple in both halves. More games. May was pretty powerful. Games. Yeah. Um. Some things to like. And yeah, that that's a good point, Jimmer. And I, I think the Glaber the Glaber moments, the bad moments, stick out a little more last year just because wins were so hard to come by that I think any of those moments that were in critical situations stood out even more just because the winning was less. So even though Glaber Torres' season is one of the few bright spots from from last year's Yankees team couple of those moments hurt. And you're right. Like, his 158 games played and 800 OPS on the season, if that was surrounded by normal Yankees baseball, we'd, we'd be feeling, like, great about Glaber. And I still think we're feeling generally well about it. Um, that, yeah, I, I know I'm, I'm interested to see all the, all the discussion about the leadoff spot. Um, we saw Glaber change his approach last year. Like, he would eat on that first pitch, and then he'd kind of settle into an at-bat. And I know there's a lot of two-strike things. No, that was um, 2022. 
Well, he didn't strike out last year. Yeah. Under yeah. 100 strikeouts. But he um, also took away that big first swing. That was earlier in his career. Like, last year, he was just straight up, like, good at bats. Like, what they said he was going to be in the minors. And he just did not swing and miss at sliders. That was, last year was awesome. You could see him buckle down with two strikes, but he kind of took out that out of his shoes big first pitch, which was, uh, it was a 2021, I think, when we were like, fucking, come on, man. Yeah, I think there was still a little bit of that, but it was almost, it was so not effective. Like, on, on first pitch last year, he had a 625 slugging, but he didn't really connect that much. Um, and he, he was one of the few batters who did better when he took the first pitch last year. So Yeah, he I, swung at it 40% of the time in 2022. So that was that right. was the year we were like, come on. And then it dropped down to um, 37 last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think for me what's going to be interesting, uh, his numbers last year versus lefties were really impressive on the whole. I mean, 278, 375 on base, and 921 OPS – and with all this talk about the leadoff spot, it's okay, what DJ LeMahieu are we going to get? Are we going to get on base DJ LeMahieu that's good against righties and lefties? Because then probably get, try to get that guy in front of Judge and Soto. If that doesn't work, you're then probably thinking of a platoon, and that would be Verdugo versus righties, which, you know, he's kind of got to earn our Yankee trust a little bit, but the guy is a good major league hitter. Um, and then it would become an interesting Glaber DJ type discussion. Um, cause we've seen Glaber lead off. We've seen DJ lead off. I think both have better numbers versus lefties that I don't know would be interesting to see. Seems like they're going to start with DJ lead off and Glaber would slot all the way down to sixth. Something like that. I like him there. I mean, last year it really, his plate discipline numbers just kind of tell the whole story and it's cool. Cause visually you could see it as well. His chase percent went down below his career average, below MLB average, so he didn't chase. When he did chase, his chase contact percent went way up. He was 59 uh, the year before, 56, um, 54 before that, 54 before that. Last year, he was 64%, so six out of 10 times. He swung on a pitch out of the zone. He made contact with it, put it in play, fouled it off, whatever. That's way higher. That's way higher than the league average, which was what he did. He like kind of like completely switched. It's like, no, I'm going to work at bats. And like, uh, and then his, I believe his put away percentage on sliders was the thing that I remember talking about a ton. Um, his put away on breaking balls, meaning getting the last, the at bat ends on these, dropped to 11% from 17.6% the year before that. So it was like it was almost like in 2022 he tried to be slugger Glaber, and then last year was like nah never mind. But I did see on his vlog he's a crea- content creator now. Right. He's using a lighter bat now I think mm. to try and like keep the same swing but get the bat speed going faster or something. I forget what his it was just bite sized conversation snippets in the vlog. But I think he did say he was going to change his bat. I want him to be that type of hitter, especially yeah. if you have Soto Judge. Stands healthy at all. If Verdugo um, and DJ are also around there, like this is the type of guy I'd really like to plug into the like six soul, seven hole if they're rotating around or even lead off if he gets up there. Yeah, I guess, I you know, in lead off discussions, I, I mentally haven't had Glaber really in the mix. And it's it's almost one of those, I don't want to say like high, high school baseball player where the versatility almost hurts him a little bit. Like, you can back Glaber anywhere. Boone's talked on this very program about that. Um, but I don't know. I'm also, right now, I'm going through, you know, my my big thing. Like, the, the lineup's going to figure itself out this year, and that's really exciting after last year. Um, I'm trying to think of those end-of-game high leverage at bats. And I will say something Glaber has going for him. When Glaber locks in, Glaber yeah. locks in. Like, I'm picturing him against those high velo relievers. Yeah. And he has that. So that's, I guess for me, you know, I, I've been excited about the DJ prop. Obviously, if Verdugo clicks, you can go left, right, left, uh, him, Judgy Soto. But maybe there's a Glaber Torres lane because if I'm being honest, and this is some preseason BS, but against like high velo tough relievers, 
I'm sure there's more stats on it, but I mentally feel a little more comfortable with a locked-in Glaber than I think DJ. Mm, if DJ's reverts to form, like 2019 ALCS DJ, like that dude. Yeah. Like, you know, 2018, 2019 DJ was. It's a couple moons ago now. It was. 2024. It, it, it is. But last year, at the end of the year, DJ was really locked in. Cause he's so it wasn't like fucking, 2019. I think DJ. DJ gets to like a level of focus Glaber can't accomplish. Yeah, I don't. I think regularly. I think when it's an actual big moment and Glaber's in there. I will if Glaber's got a hit in the game already. Because he's his he's a confidence dude, which yeah, most people that's are. True. Yeah, I guess I and this goes to some of the like glass now and some. Fairbanks, like I feel like I've seen DJ struggle with those guys just a little bit more. But again, I'm I don't know overanalyzing a little bit without stats and data. Um, but you know, I I think another thing that was funny that we stumbled into last year because there's been a lot of talk about like who is Glaber Torres, the baseball player over the years, whether it's shortstop or second base, the guy that hurt hit 38 homers in that juice ball season. He did feel a lot more comfortable last year, and it's funny that the stats, 273, 347, and 800 OPS, all those are really close to his career numbers. That it's like, hey, this is what Glaber Torres is. That's a really good baseball player. Kind of don't try to be more than that because anytime you have, it's like come back to bite you. Yeah. I just... uh. Yeah, I hope he doesn't like. I hope he doesn't think last year's the foundation, and now let's build power behind, uh, back out on top of it. Like, no, do what you did last year. Yeah, like you're saying, like that's who you should be playing as. The, the, the amount of power he gave us was plenty. Yeah, and you want to looking at Baseball References high leverage split, which I don't even really know if I like or not, but year by year, it shows kind of the same trend over the last three years. Is that he his batting average in those situations went up from two forties to two eighty six. And his on base went up, but the slugging went down from 2020. So it's just like a kind of a lot of trends you see are going to show the same pattern of he traded slugging for good at bats, which is nice. Yeah. Not for every single batter to do, but if that's your skill set, do it. I mean, is there, I guess, is there anything else for Glaber that were even really good against relief pitching last year or knowing his career? that we're looking out for this year that would be different than anything normally? Uh, fun. That's like yeah. the last thing I'd like to happen. I'd like him to be happy with his year last year. And Soto. I'd like Soto to be around. And Dominguez. I, and Dominguez. And I like have some fun because we have seen this kid look so burdened by the pressure yeah. at times. I think he yeah. handles it well and he comes through. And I like Glaber a ton. It's just like I... You know, you say it all the time. You see all these young, fun guys, and I don't know if the Yankees beat it out of him or kind of like he just gets so down on himself when he has a bad play. But I'd love for him to be feeling like a veteran guy, about to go on his contract year, part of the mix, uh, and, like, having a lot of fun. And, you know, you're going to – I'm going to allow – maybe we keep a chart. Maybe we keep, like, a, a like piece, of, piece of paper on the wall. I'm going to allow him five okay. brain farts slash – Invisible man running. Make it six. One a month. That's a ton. Like, I'd like one clean month, no? Imagine that. I don't expect it. I guess that's... Yeah, I'm not as down on them as as you were. I know last year you got real pained by some. But I'm including invisible man running. Because that's fun. Those have helped sometimes. Remember when he scored from... Second, we asked Boone. He's like, yeah, sometimes he thinks he's invisible. Just goes. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'll give him five and a half. Okay. Is that your over-under? No, because we're going to count one as a half. Okay. To help him out. That's nice. Yeah. Real nice. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff they, you know, sometimes at the DraftKings Sportsbook, they get their daily deals out there. You can find a little, get a little extra juice in on the action. They still got their daily Fantasy stuff that they were built off of. And they're giving you a no-sweat bet on NBA action up to 1000 bucks. So if you get it wrong, 
you will get a bonus bet back in that amount that you place. Minimum deposit of $5. Sign up using promo code YANKS. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code YANKS. Get a no-sweat bet. That's promo code YANKS only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Um, what do you think he's projected for this year? Great numbers off Kendall Graveman. and Not going to see him. Out for the year. Great numbers against Erod, too. So they have him at 86% reliability. Holy shit. Basically printing his season. I mean, this is locked in. That's as locked in as locked in gets. What's the highest we've ever seen? 86? Wow, we broke the record. 267 batting average. No. 336 on base. No. 440 slugging. No. 775 OPS. No. I don't want him to get worse in every fucking slash line baseball reference. See, that's where I kind of agree with you. That's dickhead move by them. Yeah. <laughs> Every slash line, they have them just being worse evenly. Yeah. I'm out. I'm out on that. Okay. Can you give me his... Can you go to his month splits, either of you? I have another page I want to compare these to. Sure. Um, he... Can you tell me what he did in the month of... June? Bad. 198, bad 270, okay. 615. Yeah. So that, he had no one around him in June. He was batting first, second, third. He had Bowers, Calhoun. They lost Judge almost immediately. Yeah, I think Rizzo was... Concussed. He's yeah. out. Um, okay, now can you tell me July? In July, Glaber Better. Torres, 275, a 306 on base, uh, 748 OPS. 306 on base. And that's when he had one of his triples. 306? Yeah. That's not good. Only not good. six walks in July. Okay. And so then that's in month. August. And then in August. Uh, okay, that's what I was getting at. So I was leading the jury to. Right. In August, what was his stats? 327 batting average, a 410 on base, a one dot 008 OPS. In August, he batted in the three hole for majority of the month between Judge and Stanton. Mm. So, if you can get dudes around him, if Stanton slides down to six, which I don't think they're going to do, and Glaber was to go into the five hole, or, you know, like, it seems like when he's not surrounded by bad players, quadruple A, and he's surrounded by good players that people fear more than him and gets pitches to hit, he's way more in the fight. Or just a confidence thing, like he's in the lineup. So... I like him in the mix there. And then in September, was he he lost uh, Stanton behind him in September. Did that change his numbers at all? Uh, I, I moved on to a yeah, different he, two, 290 average, 389 OBP, and 808 OPS on the month of September. He liked batting after Judge. Mm-hmm. His guy on base in front of him. In his career... Uh, his best results have come out of batting third or fifth, traditionally. Or ninth. Baby Glaber. All-star youth. Glaber. Um, his most homers and most doubles in the month were both August. Yeah. Sound like a fun time for him. What was his career splits with runners on? Career splits? With no, no, not career. I'm just runners in scoring position. No, just men on. Uh, they're not great. Or they're not bad. No, no. They're his stats. They're good. That's his stats. Yeah. <laughs> and runners in scoring position, they get a tick worse, but not... Tick better. Actually, he's better with bases empty last year. Kind of the same. He's kind of the same guy in every spot. A little bit. Yeah, they're pretty similar. Runners on base-wise. Yeah, I think that was an uh, old Katie Sharp Glaber split proof episode we did a while ago. It's it's pretty wild. Yeah, the more you scroll down his career page, it's a lot of the same stuff. Way to go, Glay! Be good, Glay. They're always pretty good. Go get a nice contract from the Mets. Oh, uh, no, I don't want that at all. Oh, facial hairs in. No, I don't want them to go there at all. That's what the Mets do, though. No, I don't like that. We'll go back to the Cubs. Ooh. Thanks for tuning in. Next time, 
due for a nice payday from somebody. We'll be wearing. Gonna be young and good. Him and Marinaccio at the deadline. Marinaccio. A couple future cups. Is a mess. Yeah. It's like a three way trade. Oh, we sent you on the wrong flight. We actually. That's our bad. You don't even get, need to get on a plane. <laughs> Dead. Well, they might be on the road. She did. Roads.